Hello, greetings. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to come to uh, our homecoming. And especially, there's some event happening next door that's kind of loud. So thanks for uh, taking some time to be with us today, even with uh, the event next door. Um, my name is Melanie Kyle Holtz, and I work in UC Berkeley's Office of Gift Planning. I've been at Berkeley for 20 years, a good long time. The thing that I think is so wonderful about Berkeley is every day you learn something new. And just when you think that you knew everything, something new happens. And every day is different. And this talk is certainly part of that. And that's what makes Berkeley so amazing is things like this. So um, today I'm going to be introducing you to Darren Cook. He is UC Berkeley's Interim Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer. He's also the executive director of the Life Sciences Entrepreneurship Center, faculty at the Haas School of Business, and he led the BioTrack at Berkeley's Skydeck Startup Accelerator. He teaches entrepreneurship at Haas and programs for the National Institutes of Health and National Science Foundation. In a past life as an attorney, he led an IP legal team at BioRad Laboratories and was a life science patent litigator. Before that, he was an engineer developing cochlear implants at UCSF. So I'd like to welcome Darren Cook. All right, thank you, Melanie, and welcome. And I'm going to ask a, a question that's maybe a little bit rude. So I'm starting a timer here. What are you doing here? Like, there's a, a big football game. <laughs> Are you supposed to be at the football game? <laughs> so, you know, when, I, I don't know if you know this, I didn't really appreciate it, is that football games are not really scheduled in advance with respect to start time. So there was a real question about, hey, is this gonna go off like during the middle of the game, my talk, which has always been for 1.30. Yeah, it's in the middle of the game. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for being here. And thank you, I'm just gonna point out, people who are dedicated to coming to the event actually went to the game, left the game, you can't get back in, she bought two tickets. Caroline Winnett, Executive Director of Berkeley Skydeck, thank you for doing that. <laughs> That's dedication. All right, uh, I've been asked to put up this slide. <laughs> There's a question about whether you read this or you, you look at it. It's a lot of text, so I'm just gonna pause for 30 seconds and let you read it. All right, as Melanie said, and thank you for the introduction. This is who I am. All right, so I'm the Interim Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer for the campus. I run the Life Sciences Entrepreneurship Center uh, also for the campus. I've uh, been faculty at Haas for a number of years where I teach entrepreneurship programs to MBA students and to undergrads, including one of them's a change maker class, which I'm gonna tell you all about uh, in a moment. Uh, entrepreneurship programs for the National Science Foundation, and NIH, et cetera. Berkeley Skydeck ran the BioTrack for 13 six-month cohorts. And I've been an IP attorney for a long time, and even I forget that. But first, we're going to start with a quiz. You're welcome to shout it out if you would like, or you can just think this to yourself. But how many organizations do we have on campus that support innovation and entrepreneurship. And let me pause and just say, at Berkeley, we define innovation very broadly, entrepreneurship very broadly. Caroline has a guess. <laughs> so innovation, new ideas put into practice, entrepreneurship uh, uh, is um, new ventures formed. What do you think? It's a big campus, right? 30, a dozen, two dozen, 50. How about 100 plus? Yeah, this is robust. So what do you do with this, right? Number one, I'm gonna put this slide up a couple times just because if you're interested, and I hope that you're interested in this topic because you're here in the middle of the football game and you wanna hear about this, the begin.berkeley.edu website is where all the information is about those 100 entities. So if you're ever curious, you're welcome to Bookmark this. I'm going to put this up again at the end, just because this is something that really is the definitive list, thanks to 
uh, the Siddhartha Center for putting this together, the definitive list of resources we have on the Berkeley campus. And there's no one way to use these resources. And I just want to give you a couple different biotech examples. Companies that have started at Berkeley, have made their way through programs, have ended up getting substantial uh, funding, and now live in different programs in, on the campus. So here's one. You know, started up in 2020, went through Skydeck, got some grant money, uh, is now living at Baker Labs. Here's another. So the founders met in my speed teaming event. They hit it off. They did the I-Corps program. Skydeck Pad 13 got a Baker Lab Spark Award. But look, it's all mixed up, right? Like, how do you know which order? How did Hopo Therapeutics know which order to do all this? Right? It's confusing. That is confusing. How do we make sense of all of this? Well, luckily, in 2018, the then Vice Chancellor for Research said, hey, yeah, how do we make sense of all this? Because that is confusing. And they put together a special a, a blue ribbon panel of professors who are interested in entrepreneurship to think about it, led by Professor Dave Schaefer, now the head of QB3 and Baker Labs. One of the number one recommendations from this chancellor's report was what? We need to hire somebody to make sense of all this, right? Because that is confusing. And so what did we do? 2020, we hired the right guy. Anyone know who it was? Yeah, that guy. Anyone know who that is? Yeah, right. So from 20, 2008 to 2018, Rich Lyons was the dean of the Haas School of Business. He actually does sing in public with his guitar, right? So he was, was famous for being the singing dean. Absolutely beloved and effective. Brought in the 9 out of 10 biggest gifts to the Haas School of Business ever. One the best teacher award at Haas, like six, six years running. And the only reason I think that he stopped winning the best teacher award was because they just said he couldn't get it anymore, I think is what happened. But he is that good. Right, so then what happened? Very quickly, with his leadership, Berkeley became a real focus for innovation, entrepreneurship, venture of uh, startups founded, that whole thing. Uh, this is from the beginning of his tenure as Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer for the campus. By the way, where is he now? Wait, so I've got his old job. Where's Rich? Indeed, yeah. So July 1st, Rich Lyons became the Chancellor of the University, and I inherited his old role. But what else happened? Right, so yeah, he became the Chancellor. What else happened? Yeah, this happened. So I don't know if you're familiar with PitchBook. It's a database that is the definitive resource for cataloging, cat cataloging uh, venture-backed startups and information and raises, et cetera, very startup-focused. They have, for 10 years, had a league table for a number of universities or number of graduates from universities who have started venture-backed startups. And finally, two years ago, we became number one. OK, number one, let's, let's recap. Number one, number one in venture-backed startups, <laughs> right? Number, number one over Stanford. Are we proud of this? <laughs> yeah, thank you. How proud of this are we that we put this up on a Jumbotron ad <laughs> at the football game two weeks ago? And by the way, look at the score, 38 to 18 in the fourth quarter. What was the result of the Miami game? I know. All right. OK, so you're probably thinking at this point, like, wait, this is Berkeley? Like, this is, like, what do you think of? What do you think of when you're thinking of UC Berkeley? Like, we all have, I think, thoughts in our mind. I, I've given this presentation to uh, audiences coming from outside the US, and I'm actually afraid they're like, yeah, I don't know what to think about Berkeley. But you probably have some ideas, right? Maybe it looks like this. Oppenheimer, right? Or Jennifer Doudna, inventor, co-inventor of CRISPR and Nobel laureate for that invention. Or Jim Allison, inventor of um, technology that made it possible. Uh, that's weird. Take, uh, for cancer immunotherapies. That all came from Berkeley, right? Major research. So, or maybe you're thinking this. Well, we're famous for a lot of stuff. Free speech movement, social movements. Summer of love, right? I gave this presentation earlier this week to somebody who's a couple years older than me, and he's like, oh, you know, I was there. I'm like, Dave, I've got a picture of you. There you are. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what we think of, right? 
So record stores, this is what I think of it, right? I mean, the short shorts and the neon. Heck yeah. So, or maybe you're thinking sports, right? A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of big things come out of Berkeley that are, that are popular. So, but what else? What else comes out of Berkeley? Has in the past. How about this? One of Berkeley's first biotech startups, actually the first one, BioRad Laboratories, it's still here in the East Bay, Dave and Alice Schwartz, graduates of the School of, of Chemistry, that's a Quonset hut in West Berkeley. It's now a $15 billion company, still, still independent. So Gordon Moore, graduate of Berkeley, Steve Wozniak teamed up with Steve Jobs, started a company you may have heard of. Databricks, most valuable AI company apparently in the world, is um, started by a bunch of, a couple UC Berkeley professors and their grad students. What's now a $500 billion company? This is coming out of Berkeley. Rachel Horowitz is the CEO of a public company. She started this company, Caribou Biosciences, to commercialize CRISPR, uh, when she was a grad student in Jennifer Doudna's lab, but she's still the leader of this public company. Mammoth Biosciences, CRISPR for, uh, using CRISPR for diagnostics, also coming out of Berkeley. But wait, you're saying, is that what Berkeley is? So I get this question a lot. People are saying, wait, how is all this venture stuff and startups and uh, entrepreneurship really part of a public university's mission, right? How could this fit? And I'm going to suggest it's because it's actually our mission. You're thinking you're probably dubious at this point. Like, wait, how does that work? Yeah. And, and by the way, I just mentioned mission, right? Which I think if you're like me, as soon as like, yeah, it's our mission. Everyone's got a mission, right? What's Amazon's mission? I, I don't know. It's going to be something dumb, right? It's going to be exceed customer expectations or something, right? It's going to be something. But we have a mission that you see that we really believe in and we know it. And what does it look like? Unfortunately, there's a lot of words, but I'm going to focus on a few that I think are the most important, the touchstone of the mission, and it's right here. Providing long-term societal benefits. And you're like, yeah, that does sound like Berkeley, right? Yeah, our mission, providing long-term societal benefits. How do we do it? Teaching, research, and public service. And you're still dubious, I know. You're like, hey, okay, yeah, how do the venture back startups fit into all of this? Teaching, research, and public service? Stay tuned, because I'm going to go through each one. Number one, mission number one, teaching. So this was just a quick, I thought, you know, what if I just type entrepreneurship in it or innovation into the course catalog for this year, right? So for fall of 2024 and spring of 2025, what comes up? 239 entries? had innovation or entrepreneurship in it. The first one here, what is it? Design thinking for entrepreneurs. Yeah, we have regular courses. We have courses, a ton of courses that support uh, for uh, students who are interested in this. We also have something that I'm, oh, hang on. That's not the next slide. This was a real picture when I was presenting to incoming graduate students. We had getting your bearings stays for incoming grad students, and we invited them to come in, and, and I was running the innovation and entrepreneurship room, and we thought we were going to get five people. No, we really did. <laughs> because they were like, I'll bet we get five people show up. Pretty soon, we had a room that fit 30. There were people flowing like, out into the hallway, people sitting on the floor. Like, this is popular now. But yes, what's also popular, the Changemaker Core Series. 2,500 undergraduates a year take one of our 40 Changemaker courses. And you've been thinking, wait, what's a Changemaker course? Hang on, I'm going to tell you all about it. Common theme in any Changemaker course, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. So how does this work? Let me show you. I teach one of them. This is Berkeley Changemaker Human Health. 75 undergrads. You can see here they're meeting. Um, a guest speaker, but that's only part of it. And we do have a, a clever way of handling guest speakers. So what we do is we break the, the class up, 75 students, into 15 different teams of five. They each get uh, a topic. This is kind of a public health class, even though it's at, at Haas. They each get a topic that they're going to explore as a team. They do expert interviews, and they come back every three weeks, and they report to me and the class, what did they learn, right? So it's a pretty straightforward class. But what did they learn? So I, with the permission of a student, one of my students, this is her final presentation that shows what she learned in this Berkeley Changemaker class. 
Right, so most of the class is collaborative and they have to communicate as a team. The final presentation, they do it uh, on their own. But you can see she did 10 expert interviews on the topic of lack of healthcare insurance. I mean, this is a very specific lack of healthcare insurance. And what did she learn? A bunch of stuff. Stuff concerning relocation and single payer healthcare system issues. Uh, on and on, why it's surprising, what she learned about it. But then look at the takeaways. So I require every student to think about, based on what they learned, how can they make a positive change in their area of interest? But look at what they come up with. Right, so here are three ways. Educational campaigns, partnership with student organizations, start voting drives. How are they going to do it? Right, so this is not an entrepreneurship course, right? This is about public health topics. But aren't these kind of principles that would be helpful for anyone to think like an entrepreneur? This is what we do when we're starting companies and we're, and we're so solving problems. So we're getting to these students early, 2,500 a year, with topics like this and putting them through programs like this. And just look at the scope of it. I'm just gonna pick some out randomly. So let's see, Berkeley Changemaker Algorithms, Public Policy and Ethics, Teaming for Change, uh, Sustainable Transition, et cetera. And that's just what we're teaching this fall. Look at some of these others, like the challenge of design of plant-based foods. So exploring digital, uh, digital uh, pedagogy, uh, transform society, et cetera. And it goes on and on. 2,500 students taking classes like this, going through what you just saw from Ashley Jung's presentation, thinking like an entrepreneur on many of these topics, what's going to result? Right? Real solutions to big problems, actually. Many of them will be venture-backed startups. But that's not the goal. All right. Mission number two, research. Next, next quiz. Next quiz. I want you to shout this one out. Which university, and this is kind of an unusual stat because it includes any, any faculty, either current or former, which university has the most Nobel laureates? Berkeley? Berkeley? Chicago, weirdly. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. So the, the reason I think this is, I know, you're welcome to go and dig into this database. The reason I think this is true is because every year they have to give a Nobel Prize for economics, right? Whether they want to or not, and they need to find someone who is an economics expert, and they're almost always coming from Chicago. So, but we're number two. Number two, and we have so many of them. This is what it looks like on campus. You've probably all seen this, right? That's not just one. It's another and another and another, right? There's four parking spots, and that's not the only place on campus where Parking is reserved for Nobel laureates. We got a ton of them. This database here, if you go to inspire.berkeley.edu. So let me just step back. Research, bedrock of the university, right? I mean, this is where the big ideas come from. This is where CRISPR came from. This is where cancer immunotherapies came from. It is research like this. Jim Allison won a Nobel Prize early enough. That he's not, oh no, he's there. He's, up, he's right there in 2018 for that sort of research. Remarkably, we have 24 already in 2024. They were just announced last week, right? So yeah, we keep growing this way. For students, I know a lot of you are here for its parents and alumni weekend, right? You may have students. Students who are interested in uh, connecting with this top flight research, connecting with really any sort of practical experiences on campus, the way you find these opportunities is discovery.berkeley.edu. Amazingly, the undergraduate research apprenticeship program somehow matches 3,500 undergrads to research op opportunities in top labs at Berkeley. Anyway, it's all through the Discovery Database. At this point, you're probably thinking, wait, you still haven't heard about the venture back stuff, right? Where, where are the startups? So maybe a little bit through Changemaker, right? Maybe something comes out of it. But what do we have to support people who are now thinking, yes, we're going to start something. We're going to start a venture to commercialize these great ideas. So back to public service. You may be thinking, okay, is venture in public service? How does this work? This is just a screenshot from the UC Mission website that makes it clear. Right? So UC disseminates research results, translates scientific discoveries into practical knowledge and technological innovations that benefit California first, <laughs> apparently, and the nation. Right? So this is baked in. This is what we're supposed to do. 
This is our mission statement. This is exceeding customer expectations, right? So again, 100 different organizations on campus. How do we make them work together? Right? That's hard. They're all in different departments. Guess what? They don't report to me. Only two uh, logos on this slide reports into my office. The other 100 and something are on their own. How do we make sense of this? So we have uh, Entrepreneurship Council with 55 of those organizations, 90 leaders from those organizations, where we meet once a month, we share uh, wins and opportunities, we actually share pizza occasionally. This really works, right? It almost, it works like magic. And this was an innovation from Rich Lyons when he, uh, he came into this role back in 2020. I think this is actually the secret sauce. Second secret sauce is going back in time, right? So number one, we're working together. We work together like magic. Number two, in 2012, we launched a program called the Baker Fellows Program. The Baker Fellows Program started granting research, translational research grants to Berkeley faculty to push them in the direction of commercialization. Since the launch 12 years ago, we've had 80 $300,000 research grants, translational grants, a half, a two dozen companies formed from, from the program. This is so big and so popular that the other nine UC campuses are trying to copy it even today. This is coming from UCOP, the Office of President, uh, trying to get the other campuses to copy this program. Right, it's been transformational and it's led to stuff like this. So we put together this list of 100 UC Berkeley faculty founders and this was not hard to do. Actually what was hard to do was figure out who not to put on there. So a bunch of people kind of frankly had their feelings hurt that they're not on there, right? But you know, we're looking at how big of companies are you starting? So, and why is this happening? So I think Berkeley, the UC system is unique in the world for supporting and, and using entrepreneurship in the evaluation of tenure. I, would, I keep asking this question like, hey, does, are you aware of any other university where this is coming from the provost saying, we need to recognize innovation transfer and entrepreneurship in the academic personnel process. That's tenure evaluations. That's unusual. This is baked into our ethos. So let me give you some examples of also baked into our ethos. Uh, the Wise Fellow Program from the Innovative Genomics Institute. They give four awards every year uh, to faculty and postdocs who are interested in commercializing their research. Beautiful program, like really nicely built out down at the IGI. Uh, they are all competing for a million dollar prize at the end of it, so it's almost like a reality TV show in some respects, but yeah, they, they, uh, they're really starting companies out of this program. Satarja, uh, SCET, the engineering school, has its own entrepreneurship center. Tons of people go through this program every year. 2,100 students, 300, okay, glo global academics, 18 courses every year. Uh, a bunch of innovations coming out of engineering. Citrus, if you're thinking, what, hey, what's happening in uh, IT? We do have a, 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 a program that's focused on creating IT solutions to generate societal and economic benefits for everyone. This is a different segment of, of the campus. Berkeley Skydeck. Who's heard of Berkeley Skydeck? It's kind of become famous, right? So it's a, this is actually the building in downtown Berkeley. We have the top floor there. 300 companies a year go through this program. Two six-month cohorts. 50 of them, we invest $200,000 in uh, each. They get the benefit of 700 advisors, 70 different workshops every six months, huge demo day in Zellerbach. We just had it a couple weeks ago. Tremendous resource for the campus. So, and what do they aspire to do, especially the biotech ones? Who recognizes this building? Anyone been inside? What was it? Yeah, it was the art museum, right? This is the art museum from 1970 until 2014. 2014, what happened? Yeah, it was deemed to be structurally unsound. Right? So they had to close it down. You don't want to be inside in an earthquake, apparently. And the art museum moved downtown to where it is now. And then this place was empty from 2014 to 2020, uh, 2021. Anyone know what it is now? Oh, I guess it says right there. It's a world-class incubator for, for biotech startups. And it is something inside, I'll tell you that. So this attracts 
We have about a room for about 35 tenants. We're always full. The reason they're coming here, not only it's gorgeous and it's beautifully built out, but they have the resources of the campus, of the students, of the faculty, of the core facilities. Uh, it's become a major asset on the Berkeley campus. In the things to come slides, I just have like five minutes left. The things to the come slides, you're gonna see something all else like this. Super interesting, I'm excited to tell you about. So, so far I've been talking about hard tech, deep tech, biotech, all this other tech. Do we have social entrepreneurship? Heck yeah, of course. So we have the big ideas contact test, student-led social innovations. A bunch of students come through this every year, compete to win top prizes. One of my i teams went through my i class, it's a market needs finding class, went on to win the whole thing. Oh, blew me away. So let's see. And we just keep building this, right? What does this look like? So who was here for, the, for Derek DeFries' Space Center talk? Yeah, huge, right? I'm not going to go over uh, even a bit of the detail of that, but 36 acres, um, NASA Ames down at Moffett Field, public-private partnership, going to be a huge resource. It's fun fact, I think, 47 miles away from Berkeley, seven miles away from where? Stanford, yeah. So yeah, this is a UC, UC Berkeley facility at NASA down there in the middle of Silicon Valley. So opening 2028. Opening in like two weeks, I don't know, it keeps almost opening, is the e-hub, the entrepreneurship hub run by Haas but open to everybody. This is super exciting because number one, it's in one of the coolest buildings on campus, 4,000 square foot Julia Morgan House. Like there's a house across the street from the stadium. You can actually go look at it. Uh, across the street from the stadium that was dilapidated and not usable, et cetera. Through a philanthropic donation, we were able to fix it up. Beautiful inside, restored woodwork, et cetera. It's gonna be a drop in space, a home for Berkeley entrepreneurs on campus. But the super exciting thing is, remember I showed you the 100 different resources and how do you make sense of it? And the Begin website is useful. Well, you know what's even more useful if there's a person? that you could just book time with. So the eHub has a dedicated person whose only job is to think about like, okay, where are you? What do you want to do? You should use these resources in this order. They actually live in the house. Okay, not, they go home at night, but <laughs> when the house is open, the navigator will be there during the day. So, or you can uh, connect on Zoom. So let's see, this is the other thing. The counterpart to Baker Labs, the Bioingenuity Hub is the Climate Ingenuity Hub opening in 2028, double the size of Baker Labs and, and Baker Bioingenuity, right across the street from the Art Museum, uh, will be a new home for climate tech startups, and that's where they can incubate. So stay tuned for that. And we're doing it ourselves. So some of the, the, the mission from the new chancellor is how do we make get some uh, financial sustainability from this activity. And so we're actually launching startups ourselves. Here's a startup that's not just like, thanks Caroline, not just something that's come out of Berkeley with students, et cetera. This is actually something that we launched ourselves as a startup. So Berkeley has substantial equity. This is basically Airbnb for unused research equipment. We're now expanding across the country to other universities, but it's a Berkeley University of California Berkeley founded company. So we're doing more of this. Uh, I run a program called the Venture Grant Program where we're literally looking for deals or uh, technology in uh, Berkeley labs and launching companies out of them. Stay tuned, we've already launched five. We have a new program in place with an entrepreneurship in residence program where we're actually getting ahead of the game and finding leadership for these companies. <laughs> That's a new innovation. Uh, and now I'm gonna apologize because I just went through what? 10 different resources on campus, but we had 100. So I live in fear that the other 90 resources are like, oh, come on, you didn't put us up. But yes, if you want to go back and learn about the other 90, again, it's on the Begin website. So this begin.berkeley, here's the, oops, the QR code, begin.berkeley.edu website is where all the information lives. When you go there, it looks like this. So you can see, based on stage, ideation, early formation, accelerate, audience, alumni, faculty, et cetera, 
you can slice it and dice it and learn about each of these resources uh, on this database. And that is, oh yeah, if you're excited about this, this is actually, if you love innovation and entrepreneurship, if you want to get the word out about what Berkeley is doing in this space, the Jumbotron ad was not paid for by public funds. I hope you realize this. This was a philanthropic gift that the person behind it is saying, hey, we really want to get the word out about how great Berkeley is in INE, innovation and entrepreneurship. That's how we were able to afford the Jumbotron ad. We've had an ad in The Economist. We've had an ad in The Daily Cal. If this is interesting to you and you want to support this as well, this QR code goes to a giving page that supports Tipping Point. It's a program called Tipping Point where it supports and getting the word out about what we're doing on this campus. All right, with that, that's the end. I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to tell you more stories about people I overhear, whatever you would like to talk about. If you don't mind, can you just talk a little bit more about the social entrepreneurship resource here? Yeah, so we have, we have a number of social entrepreneurship resources. The one I highlighted was the Big Ideas Contest. So this is a, a program, not just at Berkeley, but I think also at Davis and Merced and different UC campuses, but it's UC campuses where teams get together with a social entrepreneurship idea and get a ton of support, uh, advisory support, programming, et cetera, but ultimately ends up with a, like a pitch day, a demo day. So if you're interested in that, I don't know the website, but if you, if you Google big ideas at UC, because again, this is not just Berkeley, uh, you'll find a, a ton of information. Uh, since the, oh, this will be our last question. You referred to 700 advisors in one of the slides. How much alumni involvement do you have? Yeah, okay, I love that question. We have 700 volunteer advisors at Berkeley Skydeck. Like that's, let that th sink in, right? 700 volunteer advisors, they're volunteers. But we vet them to make sure they're doing it for the right reasons, that they're just looking to give back. They're not doing it for biz dev or finding new clients, et cetera. We have a portal on the Skydeck website where we invite people to apply to be a volunteer advisor. We take maybe 10% of them. This blows me away. We're sending the vast majority of emails to pe people saying, hey, look, it, you know, we appreciate your interest. We think you're actually a real, perhaps, expert. But we actually don't have room for you. And so the challenge I face most is what to do and how to get and how to harness smart, expert alumni. And so I'm thinking about this every day. So you're right, we have a ton of alumni involvement. If you're a smart expert alumni and you have an idea about how you can help and, or how you can actually systematize the uh, corralling of that resource, I would love to hear about it. All right. All right, well, thank you so much. Let's give Darren a, a hand, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>